Hi, we're in Garden Grove, California at the home of Mox Miller, and there's a car here that I've been, I haven't seen since the early 60s, and I just got a tip that it's here. Um, this car, you might not remember it if, you, if you're not from Southern California because it never really got featured in any of the magazines. Epitome of 1962, panel paint, it's a 58 Impala. His father had a 58 pickup that was painted to match. Uh, and these cars became full-on show cars. As far as I know, they haven't run since 1962. And I'm just not real sure what we're going to find. One of the things about this car that I remember are the, the mag wheels. It had Halibran Indy mags on it. Hello, Mox. Welcome, Pat. Glad to meet you. I'm glad to meet you for a long time. I've yeah. heard about you, but never <laughs> met you before. Well, let's uh, see this car. I have, haven't seen this thing probably since 1964. Probably. And who's this? This is my friend Gordon. Gordon, yeah. glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let's see the car. Okay. Whoa. It's just exactly the way I remembered it. Now it's it's been like this since 1962. Right. When's the last time it ran? 62. <laughs> Whoa. Now this is what we call panel painting, and this uh, this was the epitome of 1962. Ed Roth, uh, Watson. I love it. I love this car. And what's this next to it over here? Uh, yeah, this is my dad's pickup that we built right after we got mine finished. Let's see it. Okay. Yes, it did. It, uh, that's what he actually got it for. And then, uh, then Dad decided that after he heard a comment that uh, it, used, it looked like it was stock, and so we decided to work on it too. Okay. And that's how it got to where it's at. So it became a full-on show vehicle as well. Yes, it did. The man that did the paint job on the car now was little Dick Jackson. Out of, he was in Compton on Londra when I met the man. The whole car was shot the silver blue pearl first, and then he then he laid out the panel and the scalloping, and then shot faded it in and scalloped at the same time. Then this was done in '62, all in lacquer. Dennis Rickliff did the striping up at Dennis, I mean up at the Dick, little Dick's, and he was probably one of his first stripe jobs that, when he started. The surprising thing about this car is that there are no body modifications at all. It's all done with paint. It's not even nosed and decked. When I bought the car, I liked the, the looks of the car and the style and all the chrome on it. And the inner shows, I wanted to modify it a little bit just to, to change it for the points. They used to put me in uh, mild custom. That's what I actually, because there's no body modification, I could go into mild or, or moderate custom. But I used to run against semi-customs and still beat them. 58s were one of my favorite cars, number one, because it was my first brand new car I ever owned. I bought the, the 58 brand new at Beach City Chevrolet back in 58. It was a 348 with a three twos on it and a three speed. First job, paint job I put on it uh, was Baron Roth, Roth and Kelly did it, and they put a gold scalloping on it. Then I went over to little Dick Jackson, and he put a paint job on that for this paint job, almost similar to it. Then I left it sit out in the driveway and it hair checked real bad and then I stripped it all the way down to bare metal and that's when I really went with the chrome fender wells and all the other stuff that I've done to it. And with the doors off, fenders off, engine out and glass out, everything out. And he came up with this paint job 
and I really, it's kind of wild. I sanded it and got it ready. So we traded work. So it took us a long time because he, he painted the doors off the car and a lot of the fenders off the car because it was pinstripe. There's pinstriping underneath the, the bottom of the door. The door hinges are chromed. And everything's chromed on the doors and everything, you know, the door hinges and the locks and everything else that goes with it. So they were off the car when we painted and then I put it all together. It was a bench seat and now I put the buckets in later. The upholstering was done by Long Beach Auto Top. Later on down the road, I just kept adding to this car by chroming the A-arms and the rear end, the gas tank and the muffler system, the header system, and I end up putting air heart disc brakes and chrome most of all that. And, uh, and it just was a add-on, keep adding to it just to make, keep people coming to look at the car. This one's a the 348, it's the original block, it came in the car and I just pulled the, man the manifold off and when I took it down had it bored and, and had it polished and ported and, and I have an Esky cam in that one also, roller. And uh, the headers are Headmans, old style Headmans that came back then. And, and it's a Krager. It's a Krager, I bought the whole blower setup from Krager. Four seven. From Bell uh -huh. Automotive down there. I went down there and picked it up through Offenhauser. I got most of my stuff from Offenhauser when I was dealing with them when I was building these cars. But they gave me a deal <laughs> at the time. How about your dad's truck? He started going to shows with me. We, he started to get interested in it. So after I got mine mostly all the way done except chroming a few things here and there, we started on his truck and, and started making it so it's showable. And, uh, we went from real mild to wild after a while, just doing this and that and everything to it. And Why did he get the truck in the first place? My dad wanted to get the truck for going hunting. That's why it's called the Hunter. He was the original owner from Beach City Chevrolet also. Now, is it all chromed underneath too? No, we elected not to chrome this car because he wanted to drive, drive it every now and then, but we did a lot of uh, metal spraying on it, like the mufflers and the drive shaft and a few things underneath that we did the metal spraying because it would keep up with uh, not rusting. And he actually did want to drive that's on the street. It had a straight six in the car when he bought it. After all we did, we ended up putting a 348. It's been punched out to 370 with dual quads and heads and cam and balance and polish and port and the whole blown shot in it. I'm a second owner on that, and I bought it back in around 64. I put a big a 348 in it, and, but I bored and stroked it to 426 and 409 heads and 409 carburetors. A wreath crank in it and a roller cam and dug headers on it. And it's got a 456 rear end with a Muncie four-speed in it. I got parts of 348s and 409s. I got about three or four blocks of 348 and 409 stuff. It's just sitting around the hair and heads and carburetors. I could put about two 348s or 409s together right now. I got the three twos and I got the 409 dual quads too for one for each and one for the other and I got the heads for them. I don't sell nothing. 